context and facts here. Uh, the facts are apparently, Meg, that there were adverse effects involving six women uh, who suffered uh, cerebral blood clots of some sort uh, out of 6.8 million uh, people who have been administered the J&J &J vaccine. What does this tell you? Yeah, Tyler, what it tells us is this is a very rare event, but the actions being taken by the FDA and the CDC today, as Dr. Fauci was underscoring, signal that they do think it is significant enough to let people know to look out for this. Things like shortness of breath, severe headache, any pain in the abdomen or the legs. Um, they are saying look out for that after three weeks after getting the shot. And the other message from Dr. Fauci is that this is a very rare event where you have this combination of a clot and low platelet count, and it needs to be treated differently than you tr typically treat blood clots. And so they're trying to get this message out there to doctors as well. If they see this kind of thing, even though it is so rare, after someone has had the J&J &J shot, they should know not to treat it uh, with heparin, which is the typical way you would treat a blood clot. And so that is the message from Dr. Fauci. This is extremely rare. They are being very cautious here, uh, trying to better understand the risk profile of the people who have these rare clots. And we will hear a lot more about that tomorrow from the CDC's outside committee of advisors. The other message we were hearing there in tandem was from Jeff Zients from the White House, um, who was saying this will not affect Americans' ability to get vaccinated on the same timeline. He was saying they've got plenty of supply from Moderna and from Pfizer. We know the companies have said they should deliver enough for 200 million people by the end of May um, and then by the end of July enough for 300 million people. You're seeing here, Tyler, the number of shots that have been administered of each kind of vaccine. J&J, uh, &J, just about 7 million. And these very rare events, only six reported so far, um, the, the emphasis being they're trying to be very careful here and to really understand the benefit risk. One of the I things that occurs, obviously, uh, is that all of the patients who had these effects were female between 18 and 48. I'm sure they're looking right now. Is Are there any commonalities uh, to these women's uh, health profiles, uh, the, the drugs, prescriptions they took, or anything like that? But the one commonality that can't be disputed here is that uh, the jo Johnson & Johnson vaccine, as well as the AstraZeneca vaccine, which has been implicated with some blood clot uh, formation in the past, are, are adenovirus platform vaccines, and the Moderna and the uh, Pfizer vaccines are messenger RNA vaccines. Is it possible that that therein lies the difference and that we've not seen the blood clotting effects with the mRNA vaccine platform? Yeah, uh, it's not proven yet, but there is a, a thought that it could be this mechanism, these adenoviral vector vaccines. AstraZeneca uses that technology. It's a slightly different delivery mechanism uh, than the J&J &J vaccine, but both use um, that technology. And so there is a question, is this a class effect of the, mm -hmm. the vaccine technology? Some rare you know, immune reaction to this vaccine vector, they call it. Um, we don't know yet, but those mm -hmm. are the kinds of questions being asked. And certainly because this came up with AstraZeneca being in the same class, a lot of questions around yeah. that time. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.